All right, so ladies and gentlemen, moving on quickly to our next session, which is another keynote address, and this will be delivered by our distinguished guest and speaker, Ms. Sally Taylor, Minister, Councillor, Climate, Science and Technology for the Government of UK. Dear guests, can we have a big round of applause for Ms. Taylor? Over to you, ma'am. Good morning, and thanks very much. Um, I can see uh, what Mr. Reddy means about the lights. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, let's see how we go. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and it's, um, the UK is very happy to have um, worked with Niti Ayog on this and to be um, a part of organising this workshop. And thanks very much for everybody who's participating, both those in the room and those online. I think there's some really great expertise and some experiences here which I think will really benefit the workshop. So today we're looking at something that sort of touches some really big themes that governments across the world are grappling with. The infrastructure, the way cities grow, technology, how to really secure the best investment for public spending. Infrastructure, as um, our previous speaker was just saying, is a really huge priority here in India, but also for the UK, and we're all grappling about how to make that sustainable, how it can really support the growth and the improvement in the lives of our citizens. And of course, it's a really sharp focus for India with so much um, new building still to come. And climate is also one of those new challenges that we're increasingly needing to think about and how we respond to it. The UK has had a long um, partnership with, with India, particularly around cities. I was here 20 years ago and we had big urban programs here, which I remember um, really trying to make a difference to people's lives. And more recently, been working here with Indian partners on the smart cities, on financing of urban infrastructure, how to think about accessibility, how to think about climate change and resilience. And of course, technology is a really big part of all of our lives these days and will increasingly transform our lives. There's, and it offers great potential to improve things for us all. So all of these themes are captured in the um, 2030 UK-India roadmap, which was agreed by our respective prime ministers know, coming up for three years ago now. And there's specific reference to the building information modelling as one area where we wanted to develop a partnership. And I think that reflects both Indian interests but also the UK experience. So let me just say a little bit about that. You know, we sort of started and developed and adopted building information modelling to try to make the, inf the construction sector more efficient, to reduce costs, to reduce time overruns. And it's now been more than 10 years since we started phasing in mandatory adoption of this technology and this approach. But we did that in a way which was both about investing in capability, about developing new standards, taking a phased approach, wanting to avoid um, imposing unrealistic outcomes on industry, but wanting to make the most of the potential that it had. And I think we've seen sort of clear evidence across a range of sectors of the benefits that it can bring. There was one study looking at an infrastructure investment of about three billion back in 2019, which estimated savings of at least 250 million pounds. And you can also see private companies adopting its use, even where it's not mandatory, seeing that this approach gives them good information, it helps to identify problems before they arise, and knowing that it is easier and cheaper to change a design than it is to change something that's already been built. And now increasingly it's being used to think about climate change. So London is using um, BIM and other tools to identify vulnerabilities in the utility networks. 
trying to find those problems before they arise and be able to take action and resolve them. As weather patterns change, we all face these new challenges, and it's a key benefit of this application. And it did, indeed, it won an award last year at the Global Climate Innovation Awards. I'm really pleased to have here colleagues from the Connected Places Catapult in the UK. They are our innovation hub, um, looking at cities, transport, place sort of leadership and bringing together expertise from public and private sectors to really use technology for public good. And I'm sure they have great experiences here to share. So to the workshop, um, as I say, we're very glad to be doing this with Niti Ayog and to have worked with them over the last three years to develop a strategy to roll out this technology and other tools in the infrastructure sector in India. And, and to really sort of share some of our experiences, um, we can see that sort of coordinated public sector leadership, investing in the right technology, upskilling stakeholders, really holds potential to improve construction standards and get a better return. It's already happening, of course. I don't want to suggest this is something that's not happening in India. It is happening already. And we were involved with the Asia Development Bank in looking at, with the National Capital Regional Transport Corporation, looking at the Delhi Marut Rapid Rail Transit System. And that was very successful in enabling that to come within budget, to be on time, and to provide really good monitoring of performance standards. And at the back of the, the room, there's a number of other examples that have been supported by other, other work here, which I'm sure will be very interesting to hear their experiences, what they found, um, how they've used it well, and what's the, how they see the benefits. So I just want to mention one last thing, which is that we are um, agreed with the government that we, lo we will organise um, a first edition of a sort of BIM foundation course, which will be delivered by colleagues from the Catapult um, next month. So that's for policy makers, asset owners, managers, and it'll go into more depth about how to use digital tools over the infrastructure life cycle. So I hope some people here will be able to take advantage of that and really sort of bring in private sector as well as government and academic institutions. So let me finish here. Regrettably, I can't stay for the whole conference, but I have a number of colleagues here who are really keen to make connections with all of you, and I really hope that the workshop is helpful in enabling us to generate a good way forward and to make best use of such technology. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for such valuable views and opinions on the subject. And uh, once again, may I call upon Ms. Elizabeth Atwell to hand over the memento from our side. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.